DIC. DIC stands for Disseminated Intravascular Coagulation. DIC is always secondary to some underlying disorder. So it fits really well in this unit following our shock unit because ischemia, sepsis, toxins are all traumatic injuries to the body. So what happens in DIC is either an intrinsic mechanism is triggered, which normally is the first step in the clotting cascade, it's either going to be extrinsic or intrinsic from damage to the endothelial lining itself. So either one of those could have caused it. So what I've illustrated here is an intrinsic injury that occurs to the endothelial lining. And then platelets then are drawn to that area. Platelets are then going to aggregate and then eventually the whole fibrin clot is going to form around it. That fibrin mesh is going to encase it so it becomes a stable clot. Well, what happens in DIC is that this process, which normally has the clot formation and clot dissolution in kind of a balance, so it's only there when we need it, well, it's gone awry. So these clots just continue to form and all the platelets are aggregating and the mesh is forming to the point where we have stopped blood flow. And that's what occurs systemically is that thrombosis is occurring peripherally, our organ systems begin to get um, ischemic, whether it's the heart, myocardium, myocardial infarct occurs because of clots, the kidneys get ischemic, the bowel gets infarcted and ischemic. So we have widespread ischemia due to this overproduction of fibrin clots and because all these clotting factors are used up, what you have in the other parts of the system is hemorrhaging because we have diminished platelets, a diminished fibrinogen level, diminished prothrombin, and we have widespread hemorrhage. So upon assessment of the patient, sometimes it's difficult to detect DIC until kind of an overt bleeding occurs, but the patient will start bleeding from you know their mucosa nosebleeds their iv sites you'll begin to see um, petechiae you'll begin to see ecchymosis and and they'll maybe internally hemorrhaging you'll begin to see hematuria in their urine so what's elevated is you know in order to confirm the diagnosis is that you'll see an elevation in fibrin split products you'll see an elevation of their PTINR. What do we do about it? Well, the best thing to do in DIC is always to treat the underlying cause. So if it's sepsis, we want to reverse the sepsis. If it's you know, an underlying OB emergency, you treat that accordingly. But in the meantime, so the patient doesn't have this widespread thrombosis and blood loss, there's experimental things, nothing's, you know, a confirmed treatment. It's very difficult to manage DIC. Low dose heparin is used, you know, lower dose than if you're trying to anticoagulate somebody. Fresh frozen plasma, try to replete those clotting factors. Cryoprecipitate, fibrinogen, platelet transfusions, packed red blood cells. So whatever the patient needs, whatever they're deficient in, is what you try to replete in treatment of DIC. But again, the best thing is always to treat the underlying cause and the DIC will hopefully reverse itself.